Hi, my name is Micah and this is called Kendama. I have been playing Kendama for over 7 years and was immediately hooked the first time I picked it up. I started playing Kendama because of something unique and I love the challenge it presented. For those that don't know, Kendama is a traditional Japanese wooden skill toy. There are people including myself who dedicate hundreds, even thousands of hours to perfect their skills. For experienced players, doing basic tricks like big cup, small cup, base cup, and spike seem easy. However, for a new player, these simple tricks can be more daunting than they look. Because of that, we decided to conduct a little experiment. Okay, so we're here at SF State, and we're going to go around and have college students try out Kendama to see how hard it really is. First, I'm going to have you try the big cup. So mm -hmm. the big cup is this cup right here. Mm -hmm. So the ball on top, like this. So I'll give you three tries to see if you can land that. Oh. Oh. It's kind of hard, actually. <laughs> Just do your best. Oh, so close. So close. There you go. Ooh. Oh, got it. That was easy. And then I'm going to have you try another trick. It's a little harder. I'll give you five tries for this. It's called spike. So you, there's a hole on the ball. Let's try to get onto the spike. Like that. I've never done Kodama before, so actually it's my yeah. first time I even... That's cool. Awesome. Uh, it's definitely not easy. No, this is definitely a practice thing. Was it easier or harder than you expected? I mean, I haven't tried before, so yeah, I know cool. how difficult it is. I think... I'm not sure what this was called. The, the spike? Yeah, the, the spike, spike seems yeah. harder than the cup. Yeah. Um, it's pretty easy because I already have a Kodama, so... Oh, you do have a Kodama. Yeah. The first kendamas have origins dating back to around the 17th century. There have been many different kinds of cup and ball games, like the Bilbo Cave from France and the Bolero from Mexico. The kendama is a Japanese version of this toy. This rendition has more cups, giving it the resemblance of a sword. In fact, ken means sword and tama means ball in Japanese, translating to kendama. Kendama has evolved a lot since it was first invented, with there now being different wood types, shapes, paint, and even string material. Here are some people who have a lot of experience with this toy. Hey, my name is Joshua Yanga. What's up, guys? My name is Nick Gallagher. Hi, my name is Ben Harold. I'm a Kendama player here in the Bay Area. I am a Sweets Kendamas pro. I'm a professional Kendama player for Green Theory. I've been playing Kendama for nine and a half years. So in about a week, on March 27th, we're going to be hosting the San Jose Kendama Open here at this very park. It's a local tournament, so my goal with events like this is just to give the experience of competing to the local players. That way when they do go to a bigger event, they have that little bit of experience and it's not totally brand new. Maybe their nerves are a little bit less intense. I enjoy playing Kendama because, well, there's a lot of things. It's, it's like a distraction from just like being on your phone or being on technology, you know? It's a, it's a great alternative to that. Every time I see people playing Kendama, it's like you're instantly friends in a way. Like you share the same hobby and the same passion. It's something you can instantly connect with other people. One of my friends from high school just had a Kendama sitting around in his room and he had never really used it. It was just someone had gotten it for him and he messed with it a little bit. But the moment that I picked it up, I, I felt it immediately. I immediately knew like, okay, I could do this forever. This is gonna possibly take over my life. Uh, Kendama has impacted my life uh, in a pretty great way. I mean, playing it for about seven years, you know, that's gotta have like a huge impact 
I've met so many different people I'd never expect to meet here in the Bay Area. Um, even outside of the Bay Area, you know, like whenever there's competitions and stuff, uh, people from around the world come to meet and bond together just over this one toy. But it's like more than a toy, you know, it's something people cherish and people really thrive to um, socialize and build a community towards. I'd look like at inspiration from like, you know, those top players and I'd get inspiration. Like everyone looks up to those kind of people and seeing those kind of tricks, they inspire you to do them. But also I kind of try to twist it and manipulate it in a way that kind of brings out my own style in them. Kendama is definitely an escape from reality and um, it's just used as maybe a coping mechanism for people, for um, a de-stressor, most definitely. That's what I use it mostly for. Um, people use it for all sorts of things, but mostly in a positive way, of course. Like whenever I'm feeling, you know, overwhelmed or like ramped up, angry or something, I just pick up that kendama off my shelf and then just play with it and then, you know, your worries kind of disappear. I kind of do not know a life without kendama. It's, it's been with me since elementary school, like that's, that's hard, but a life without kendama is definitely, you're missing that, that community. <laughs> You're missing, um, you know, that escape, and you're kind of just missing that um, thing to look forward to, to um, push yourself, to help yourself grow. It, that's that's really what kendama is, and without that, it's I don't know how life would be. Well, kendama competitions. I mean, the prizes, of course, attract everybody, you know, and um, uh, definitely the recognition from the professional players and the companies. Um, I recently won um, third place over at the Sakura Classic and um, just from that, um, Sweets Kendamas, which is a company, they followed me and recognized me and some of their pros as well and that's, that was awesome. I started playing Kendama in sixth grade, January 2012. I, uh, I was 11 years old at the time and it became a huge fad in my middle school. Even after everybody stopped playing in my school, um, like nine months later after the fad started, um, my brother and I, Zach Gallagher, um, we both continued to play and yeah, we've been playing ever since. It's been 10 years now and it's definitely the number one thing that has changed my life. I'd say I, I definitely owe so definitely a lot of my success to just Zach for help, like just having someone to play with is, was the number one thing for me. Cause like I said, I probably would like, he definitely kept me playing after the fad died in my school and I, um, I, I probably would have quit if I didn't have him, to be honest. But honestly, just the sole fact that I really enjoy Kendama and it's one of my main passions to this day is definitely has definitely attributed to my success. Playing with other people is the best and I've been fortunate enough to have people my whole life, uh, my whole Kendama career to uh, play with. My first ever big competition win was 2016 the national Kanama competition. It was called Minnesota Kanama Open at the time, but now it's called the North American Kanama Open um, because it is the biggest event in North America. So that's held in Minnesota every year. That year in 2016, it was at the Mall of America and I was able to snag first place. It was a very huge moment for me. Nick's success caught the attention of the company Sweets Kendamas who later reached out to him and offered him a sponsorship. He was then able to have his own signature model Kendama. Nick recalls the day of his pro player announcement. Oh, this was, this feeling was amazing. It was at the Mall of America at the North American Kendama Open in 2017. There's four floors to the Mall of America, right? And, and everybody was just all looking down on the center of the stage where everybody usually is and competing. Zach and I, my brother, we got announced at the same time, so. Um, we were both just um, in the back, just waiting. And our video, our pro model announcement was playing on the big screen in the center of the Mall of America. And after it was over, everybody started cheering and we went up on stage. And I know I can say for myself that um, it was definitely in a surreal moment because it's not every day you get to go pro at like the biggest event in the North, in North America. So I was able to achieve like this, this goal of mine. It just everything was absolutely perfect. Some of my biggest competition wins um, include the Kendama World Cup um, in 2018. It's held in uh, Hiroshima every year in Japan, Hatsukaichi to be more specific. 
Um, it's usually held in the summer where everybody from around the world goes and competes on a worldwide stage. Um, it's definitely the biggest event and it's definitely, it's one of my favorites to go to. I moved to San Jose, California in 2015 from Reno, Nevada, where I grew up because I had gotten word that a guy was opening up a store out here in the, in the Bay Area that specifically sold kandamas. And I was kind of already looking to move out here, just needed a good opportunity. And so I sent him an email and showed him some of my edits and I moved out a week later. So my first year that I lived out here, I worked at a kandama store, it was called Kandama Syndicate. As normally happens, you know, it eventually kind of died back down. Uh, the kids that really liked it, they kept playing with it. Most of the kids fell off. And so the store ended up closing and right just a few months after that is when I got sponsored by Grain Theory. And so that was a moment when suddenly there was no, no central location for events, no one really organizing anything. And I looked around and I was the one sponsored player in the area. So I thought, I guess it's on me. And so since then, pretty much every Sunday, other than a uh, little bit of a break in 2020, we've met here at the Chinese Cultural Gardens in San Jose. Everybody, when they compete in a kendama event for the first time, everybody gets some nerves and almost everyone gets a little bit shaky and you go up and tricks that you were hitting every try right before, you get on stage and the nerves just get you. And you can't really practice for that except by competing. So my goal for events like this is to give that kind of experience to the local players. The mindset is, is a complicated thing when it comes to competitions, definitely. Those joyful moments when you actually land a trick and then the frustration of like losing and all that, it all like having that, having experienced all that at once is just all that like adds up. And then over time, you're definitely gonna see improvement in your play. All right, we are out here at the San Jose Kendama Open. We are gonna get the bracket started in just a few minutes and get on with the open division. And then after that, speed ladders, and we'll do a couple other mini games and we'll call it a day. See who takes it home. Justin versus Miguel. Kendama is so much more than a wooden toy. It brings people together, of all ages, from different places, and different stages of life. What's so great about it is that you don't need to be the best at it. You just have to enjoy it. Everyone can learn something new, whether it be through creativity, community, competition, or growth. At the end of the day, Kendama is truly about having fun. This is the way of Kendama.